There are a variety of audience segments you can create in Google Ads to use for remarketing. Website visitors, maybe upload customer list, look at YouTube users, that's great. But lately, a lot of our clients have been using Google Analytics audiences. These can be created now within Google Ads, and sometimes you can get a little bit more specific on which user you're trying to reach. So in this video, we'll show you how to make sure that you're connecting Google Analytics with Google Ads properly, and then we'll give you a few favorite of our examples that we like to use in some of our client accounts. There are three main ways that you can link Google Analytics with Google Ads. We're going to walk through two right now, and I'll show you one more later. I want to start here because hopefully you have this done. I won't stay too long on this topic, but just in case you're brand new to Google Ads, make sure that you have your GA4 account and property all set up. Hopefully it's already been on your website or your landing pages and collecting information. Once you're in Google Analytics, head down to the gear symbol. We see that as admin. And then under property settings, we need to expand product links. And here we see Google Ads links. We've already done it. Our demo account is already linked up, but there you see the blue plus button to link a new account. Then you would just choose your ad accounts, whether you use a manager account or not, go through a couple steps and then you can review and submit. So that's one way to do it. Let's go into Google ads here. I'm just in the overview section, but let's go over to the left under tools. You'll see data manager. Here's where you can connect all your partner channels, like your YouTube account, your CRMs, call tracking, merchant center, whatever. And of course your analytics. Again, we already have it linked but you would just go and click connect product, head up to the top. It's already one of the recommended ones, but you can just type in GA4, blurring all of our client stuff out, but then it's just search for your property, add it, go through the same steps, you'll be connected. Okay, let's back out of this. And then we're just going to hop right into audience manager. You see it lives under tools, then under shared library, there's audience manager. To start bringing in your GA4 audiences, you'll wanna stay under the your data segments, and then we can go and click on the blue plus button. There we see the other segments that we can create, but of course we want Google Analytics. Then we'll search for our property. We have a couple in our own, one for our website and one for the course site, but there we see the third way that we can link properties. Yes, it's the easiest way, but it's also the least common way because if you're creating Google Analytics audiences, most likely you already have it set up and linked already. But if you click on link new property, there we see exactly what we saw before. So I'm just gonna choose one and then we can continue. And here's where we can start building audiences based off of GA4 information. Now, one thing, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you is the Firebase audiences in GA4. So if anyone out there works on an account promoting an app, you have GA4, Firebase, all set up within the app, you're collecting specific app activity, you'll be able to include that while you're building any Google Analytics audiences. Yes, there are specific app audience segments that you can already create within Google Ads, but sometimes analytics could have different information that doesn't already exist within Google Ads. There are some general templates that you can already use. Some of them you see are e-commerce focused, recently active users, that's fine, or you can create a custom audience from scratch. By default, our Google Analytics audiences that we're creating here will have a 30-day membership duration. You can lower this amount if you want to, or you can set it to the maximum limit, which will be 540 days. Just gonna leave it at 30, this is just an example. And then before we start looking at our conditions, here's where you can trash it. And then if we look at scoping, that's what this little logo is here. You can include users across all sessions. It has to be within the same session or within the same event. I'm just gonna leave it as all sessions. It'll help me get a larger audience. So then we can look at adding conditions. And many of these conditions will be available in other Google Ads audience segments that you can create. Things like page visit audiences. You can use either one, but essentially I like to use analytics audiences for unique things. And that's why it's highlighted in my favorite events. We didn't manually create all of these events. A lot of these are default options within GA4. The thing is you have to set these up to make sure that they're actually tracking. Not all of these are gonna do it automatically. But some of them are ones that we have set up. Like on the homepage of our website, we have a few YouTube video playlists from our channel. So we can create audiences off of people who watched YouTube videos on our website. And in case you're wondering, yes, these video options are different than the YouTube user audiences that you can already create within Google Ads. Definitely too small to run, but let's say there's enough users on there. Why would we do this? 
Well, when we're creating audiences off of events or actions that users have taken on our website, it shows a deeper intent than just visiting a page, especially in this scenario. Since I said vast majority of the videos live on our homepage, a homepage visitor could be any sort of thing. People can come, stay a little bit, bounce. How many accounts are you in that have so much bot traffic that just lands on the homepage, even if you're putting in a good effort to try to exclude that out from analytics? However, if someone's performing a specific action, watching videos, downloading white papers, another example on our website may be clicking on the link to go to our course. We did have that Google Analytics property for our course. Maybe we can create audiences off of people who added the course to their cart, but bailed. These types of audiences are going to have a lot deeper intent than just a page visit. So maybe use events and analytics on what you're tracking on your website to start building these intent-based audiences. If the default options within Google Analytics aren't collecting anything, you may have to go into Tag Manager, like this example here, create a new tag. We'll see in Tag Configuration, there's Google Analytics, and here's where you can set up a GA4 event. Now, when you're choosing your event name, there are default naming conventions in there, or you can create your own, whatever action users are taking on your site, your measurement ID, is coming from your GA4 property. So you would include that there, set up your trigger to only fire when this specific action occurs, and then it'll take a little bit to show up in Google Analytics because it needs a certain volume for it to even show up in the event report. But then you can start including your custom events in here. Notice that there are certain conditions or an and. So I can build an analytics audience saying people who are in progress of watching a video or they open up a notification. This is not an event that we use. I'm just choosing something. So when you use the or statement, you're adding multiple audiences together, essentially combining them. The larger the audience size, the better chance you can serve on some of the networks. When you use and conditions, then they have to meet both criteria. Maybe you want to reach users who performed a specific action, but they fall under a certain demographic. There are so many scenarios with all your accounts out there. I'm not going to delete this out yet, but here's a variety of e-commerce information that you can pull and create. Here's other custom options. If you're setting the event category and label to group certain actions together, when you are setting them up in Tag Manager or how you're setting them up, you can choose those. A lot of attribution models if you're using any of these. We can already set up URL audiences within Google Ads, but maybe it's just easier to create it with GA4. But there's our source and medium, depending on where it's from. So if you wanna create an audience off of anyone who's visited your website, let's say off of Facebook ads, LinkedIn organic, you can do that. And if for whatever reason, if your parameters aren't organized, let's say someone used CPC as the medium and somebody else was taking URLs with paid social as the medium, it's easy to use this Google Analytics audience and just combine them together with the or condition. I already kind of showed you demographics, age, gender, interest. This is helpful to layer on within your Google Ads audiences since not all of them are gonna be default campaign settings. If you're in the gaming industry, Gaming is not a default audience segment within Google Ads. So you're gonna to have to import that information from Google Analytics into your Google Ads platform. Here's another one of my favorite audiences. I clicked on general, search term. If you have site search on your website, what are people searching for? If a ton of people are searching for the same product, we can add this to the mix. I'm gonna remove these two, add a filter to it. So the search term contains, say you're selling Stanley Cups, whatever. First, I'm making an audience of anyone who searched for Stanley on the website. I can then look at excluding. I'm going to go back up to events. We're not going to have it because we're not an e-com site. Let's just pretend. Find your purchase event. Build an audience of people who were searching for something on your site but didn't buy it yet. And then create a remarketing audience to try to encourage them to come back to your site and buy the product. If you have a large enough e-commerce site, maybe you can layer on and they have a product in their shopping cart at the same time. Maybe that makes sense. Who knows? You know your website better than me. But search term is one of my favorite ones that I love to use if there's enough volume. Remember what I was talking about? Maybe creating an audience based off of people who clicked on the link to go to our course website. Here's where we can do it. Can't build that audience within Google Ads. Technically, I could because we do have a separate GA4 property for the course website, but you know what I mean. Maybe your link goes to a site where you don't have GA4 on it. It's a third-party site. Well, here's a way where you can track and build audiences off of those link clicks. There we see page and screen information, looking at specific page titles, platform and device information that could be a little bit more specific than what you can create within Google Ads. Some publisher information, not too familiar with that one. There's really nothing in session. Looking at specific time, traffic source, 
kind of looked at that one already. Video information, this is all YouTube based. Okay, so if you do use something else like Vimeo, there's usually other custom events that are automatically fed into GA4. There are other events that could show up that I don't have examples right now, like we have a client who has call rail, call tracking tools. Well, part of call rail creates automatic events within your GA4 property. So I could create audiences off of events that my third party partners that we've linked to the account have imported within the account. Look at those sort of things and see what you can create and what audiences make sense for any sort of remarketing campaigns. And here's a metric, which again, won't apply to us, not with our demo site, not in our industry, but predictive Google Analytics audiences, building audiences off of predicted revenue, purchase probability, in-app purchase probability. Definitely not an audience that you can create within Google Ads. You have to import this from Google Analytics. A couple more things before I save this. We went through the options and a few scenarios. Notice that you can add other condition groups to the audience. So besides all the and or conditions we include in this one, we can also include another condition group with an and function. It's just a different way for you to make a combination. You can also get pretty specific. I'm removing this. We can add sequences to it. In order for a user to become part of this audience, they must go through these conditions in this specific order. So here you can add a step, and there we see we can change it to directly followed by the next step or indirectly followed. And then I could add specific time periods in between the steps. It can get very specific. And then I used it in the Stanley option. Just remember all the conditions we can use to create an audience, we can create to use to exclude it from your audience. Yes, exclusions already exist within Google Ads, but think of all the conditions we looked at that don't exist within Google Ads. Just build exclusion audiences if you need to. Add them to your current campaigns that are already running in Google Ads to make your exclusion audiences better to help improve your current campaigns. Remove this again, and then looking at audience trigger, this is kind of the reverse process. Maybe you're building an audience, not off an event, but you wanna have that event exist within Google Analytics. So right now, I'm creating the search term audience off of Stanley. And maybe this is the most important search term on the site. I can create a new trigger that will log a specific event when someone becomes a member of this audience. I'm not gonna save it because no one's ever gonna do it on our website, but this is a way for us to feed events back into Google Analytics based upon new members into this audience. We've done this a few times because we have certain clients who their bosses are in analytics, but they have no clue how to use Google Ads. So they wouldn't know where to look in terms of remarketing audiences that we're building. We can just create a custom event report for them, including this event name, because we're feeding it back within analytics where they can just log in and see it. But I'm not gonna do this and I can always remove it, but we'll save it. Could take a couple days to populate. In our case, it'll never populate. And here we see it exists in there. We can now click on it, add it to certain campaigns or ad groups, or go within those levels itself to add. Just like any audience, we can use it from an observation standpoint. I'll show you an example, whatever, let's just choose one. And there's a way for us to add it. If you don't wanna run a specific remarketing audience off of it, but I would wanna see how many people are searching for that term within each of my campaigns, there's a way for you just to review the audience information just like any other audience segment within Google Ads. The audience size from a Google Analytics audience applies the same as any other ones on each of the networks. Display still only needs about 100 users, search is 1,000 users, and YouTube now is 1,000 users unless it's a customer match list. So that is how you can link your GA4 properties to Google Ads and head into Audience Manager and start building more intent-focused audiences. Think about all the actions users can take on your site. How can you use those actions to create more specific remarketing audiences that at least have some sort of volume that can make your Google Ads performances better. And then don't forget about the flip side. What exclusions can you create from your Google Analytics properties that you can't create within Google Ads to clean up your current audience targets within your campaigns? There are so many accounts out there and so many examples that there's just not enough time to talk about them all. I'd love to hear how you use Google Analytics audiences, so please share it with everyone in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.